Okay, my children, we are gonna do a mechanisms problem and it's gonna be great. Okay, great. So here's how you do it. First, we're like, okay, bet. We get a problem and it looks like this. Okay, so literally every single problem, every single problem, period. You do this, that's how you start the problem. So this oxygen has two lone pairs and a hydrogen and then all this other crap behind it. And it's going to share one of its lone pairs and give it to this hydrogen. And then this bond that's between the H and the CL is gonna break like this. So what, what do we end up with, right? Well, this CL is gonna go over here and do its little CL thing. It's gonna hang out and look all cute. And then this molecule, we redraw it. It's the exact same as before, except now our oxygen only has one lone pair, still has the same hydrogen, and now it has another hydrogen. I think that this hydrogen is this hydrogen, but I'm not sure, so don't quote me. Just know that once you get rid of one of these lone pairs, a hydrogen takes its place. And this oxygen has a positive charge and oxygens don't like positive charges ever. So what we're gonna do now is let this little thing, notice how this is H2O, we're gonna let it float off into space and do its thing. You don't have to draw this as a product, but sometimes it's a really good visual representation of what you're actually doing. So then the next step, oops, is we have the same little hexane with the bromine. And now there's nothing there. And this carbon is a carbocation. Sorry, I'm left-handed. This carbon is a carbocation because carbon has four valence electrons and now it only has three substituents. So that's not good. What do we do? At this point, you need to evaluate your scenario. First, Check. If I throw in my CL right here, because we have our little negative charge, right? And we have a positive charge. So in a perfect world, negative and positive, they want to kiss, right? However, if I put this here, number one, will it make a stereo center? Remember that a stereo center is a carbon that has four different substituents. The answer number one, no, this won't make a stereo center because this carbon has two methyl groups, which makes it won't ever have four different substituents. So no. Number two, is our carbon carbocation secondary or tertiary. Oops. Okay. So secondary means that our carbocation has two non-hydrogen substituents and one hydrogen substituent. And a tertiary one has three non-hydrogen substituents. And it only has three substituents, so you don't have to worry about what if we do this. No, 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 just look at this right now. This carbon has a methyl group, a methyl group, and then all this shit over here. Thus, it is a tertiary carbocation. We like this because tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations, and that's because God said so, right? Right. So, we know it will make a stereo center, and we know that our carbocation is already as stable as it can get. So now we're gonna add our CO and put it right there, literally. So here's my little redrawing of this molecule. It's the exact same over here. All we're doing is we're gonna put a CO right there. Ta-da, that's literally it. However, your problem changes 
when you have a stereo center and if your carbocation is secondary. We will see this in the next example. Okay, great. Let me move this down. Okay, here's our next problem. And then we're gonna add hydrogen, bromide to this. Okay, same as I think as before. My oxygen has two lone pairs and it wants to give one to this hydrogen. This bond is gonna break. Thus, we have a bromine hanging out over here. Looking all cute. Redraw our molecule like this. Now this looks like this. Now our oxygen only has one lone pair and two hydrogens, right? We're gonna let water do its thing. Break this bond, let water do its thing over here. Thus, another arrow shows that now we have our carbocation, like that. So you're probably wondering, well, why did this wedge go away? Why is it not shown here? That's because this, technically, this carbon only has three substituents, which would make it trigonal planar. And trigonal planar doesn't need de 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 wedges or dashes, so we don't have to draw wedges or dashes on this carbon right now. But it is important to notice that this carbon originally had a dash and a wedge. So what if, when we put something here, will we need a dash and a wedge? Keep that in mind, we're not there yet. However, we are there right now. If I put something here, say this bromine, will it make it stereocentered? And the answer is yes, because, excuse me, this has a hydrogen right here. Yes, this will make it stereocentered because we have hydrogen is one substituent, our bromine would be our another substituent, we have a methyl group, and then we have this little cyclohexene looking all pretty. So yes, it will make a stereo center. Number two, is our carbocation secondary or tertiary? And that is just shorthand for secondary or tertiary. Let's count and look at our carbon, right? Our carbon has one methyl group and then a cyclohexane thing and a hydrogen, which makes it secondary. And you're like, wait, it's not as stable as it could be. So what can I do? And then you're like, Okay, um, I know that the electrons that are two bonds away from a carbocation want to be on this carbocation. They want to kiss because electrons are negatively charged and this carbocation, as you can see, is positively charged. So when these electrons lean, they want to jump, but they can only jump if they're two bonds away. And on this molecule, the stuff that's two bonds away is in this cyclohexane. And we can't take from a cyclohexane because God. So even though this carbocation is secondary, I can't do anything about it. The next example, we will do something about it, but just wait, there's more. So it's secondary, but we can't do anything about it. So we're gonna add our bromine here like that. And I'm going to redraw this molecule over here. However, there's two ways that I can draw it, right? Because my bromine, since it's going to make a stereo center, my bromine could be a wedge or a dash. And both of these kinds of this molecule, where bromine is a wedge or bromine is a dash, exist in a 50-50 ratio. It's just like, I like to think of it as evil twins, right? So I have friends that are twins and just meeting them, I didn't know which one was evil. However, after learning about them and what they do and what they like, I figured out that one of them is evil and one of them is good. Not really, but it's an example. So if this one's evil and this one is good, and I know that they're twins, but I don't know which one I'm gonna pick, there's a 50-50 shot of you picking the evil one or the good one. 
So that means that these exist in a solution of water or whatever else you're messing with. They exist in a solution in a 50-50 ratio, which is called racemic. And that's not really necessary to learn right now. However, that's what that means. So we made a stereo center. Our carbocation is satisfied because now it has four substituents and we created two different molecules because adding the bromine here made a stereocenter, as you can see here. Okay, now, next problem is scary. So I'm gonna flip over the page and we're gonna do the next problem all together and it's gonna be great. So, which one shall I do? Um, okay, we're gonna do this one. Sorry, move my little cup. Right here, we're gonna do this. We got our little OH right there. And we're gonna add, add hydrogen bromide. Okay, great. Same exact thing as before. Lone pair, seam like that. Let's break this off like that. We draw one lone pair, two hydrogens. Our bromine is floating off into space, looking all cute. This has a positive charge. What do we do? Break off the water. Water's gonna go do its thing. And I redraw my molecule. So now it looks like this. Now, if you're in Dr. Curley's class, you'll see, wait, why did he put a hydrogen right here? That's because if we look at our original molecule, we're looking at this carbon. This carbon is attached to this group, this X thing, this ethyl group, and a hydrogen, and it's hiding right back there. The reason that this hydrogen is represented over here is because we want to make sure that we know, number one, will it make a stereocenter? And number two, is it secondary or tertiary as of right now? Let's answer these questions, right? So if I add something here, it can make a stereocenter because I have hydrogen, this X group, this alpha group. If I add anything right here, it will make a stereocenter. So yes, keep that in mind. Is our carbon, our carbon carbocation, is it secondary or tertiary, right? We have a one hydrogen and then thus we have these two. I keep saying thus, sorry. It's secondary. So what can we do? We're gonna look two bonds away, just like how in the last example, we looked two bonds away, but we couldn't take anything because it was cyclohexane. We're gonna look two bonds away and look for a carbon that has three non-H substituents. Okay, that's what we're looking for. And you'll see why in a second. So we can't do this carbon because this carbon has the CH2 carbon. This carbon is a CH3 carbon, so we can't mess with that one. And I think you're gonna see where I'm going with this. This has three H's, this has three H's, this has three H's. However, look at this, love that. This carbon in the center has three non-H substituents. And even as a bonus, it has this as a substituent. So we're gonna borrow from this carbon. I'm gonna pick this methyl group. It doesn't matter which one you take. And I'm gonna put this methyl group here instead of the bromine. Why? This is the question. Why the hell am I doing all this work? It's because when I rewrite this molecule, this is satisfied, right? Because now it has four substituents. And now instead of this being here, this is actually going to be our new carbocation. But what is so special about this carbocation? If I restart my list, we'll see that this carbocation is tertiary, which means that it's more stable. This is good. This is great. We want our carbocation to be more stable. Love it. Thus, we like this carbocation more than we like this carbocation. But keep in mind, I did say that this is gonna make a stereocenter and it did. So 
instead of drawing our carbocation like this, we need to keep in mind that it actually made two different carbons because one of them is going to be a dash and the other one is going to be a wedge. Like that. And in the answer key, Dr. Curly has our little carbocation up here. And it honestly, God, does not matter. Because it doesn't matter what you take from. Sorry, you cannot see what I'm looking at. Great. Okay, this is what I'm pointing to. He put the carbocation up here, but it doesn't matter because there's three methyl groups and now we took one of them. So now there's only two. Doesn't matter. Okay, now moving on. Well, we know that our carbocation is tertiary, so that means we're in the most stable place possible. So that's great. We don't have to worry about moving anything else. And we know that if we add something here, if we add a bromine, will it make a stereocenter? No, because we have a methyl group here, a methyl group here, so we automatically know that if we add something here, we will never have a stereocenter, period. And look at our little bromine, she's hanging out over here, she's all pretty. We're gonna add it to both of these carbocations, and then we're gonna get two different molecules. So, let's make a bromine over here. Can't see it again, I'm sorry. And then this one. Okay, and these are this is our final answer. We ended up with two of these because our original carbocation made a stereocenter. And now our final answer has two options because our original carbocation had a stereocenter. And the reason that we moved this methyl group to this carbocation instead of using the bromine is because it created a tertiary carbocation, which is more stable than a secondary carbocation. And that's what mechanisms do. Remember, every single problem starts, I'm sorry, that's my soap bottle, starts with a lone pair giving to a hydrogen and then this hydrogen giving its stuff to the bromine. And then we have our oxygen, not only has one lone pair, two hydrogens and a positive charge. Break it off, then we get water, and then we have our carbocation. That's where we start our first list. And then we go out the rest of the problem, depending on what we answer for our list. So this video helped, and let me know if you have any questions.